When it comes to television, writers have a lot more time to build their villains up and give them the development they simply wouldn't receive in a film. The overall time spent with a TV villain is key, giving audiences the opportunity to understand what makes them tick, what motivates them and what they're aiming for. It's a crushing disappointment then when a promising antagonist is shortchanged and removed from the narrative long before their time. Such is the case with the following villains, each of them bursting with potential that just never was quite realised. Whether this was due to poor writing, unfocused planning, behind the scenes headaches or something altogether more tragic, these big bads certainly deserve to be around a lot longer than they actually were. So with a major spoiler warning ahead, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 10 TV villains you wish got more screen time. Number 10. Livia Soprano in The Sopranos The case of Livia Soprano is slightly different to the other antagonists on this list. There was no bad writing or behind-the-scenes fallout that ended the family patriarch's run on The Sopranos, but the untimely death of actress Nancy Marchand. For the first two seasons of David Chase's seminal crime drama, Livia Soprano was the show's overarching villain, a dominating, troubled woman whose very existence caused her mob boss son to suffer panic attacks and admits to needing therapy. In a much less cruel world, Livia's antagonism and influence would have carried the series through for many more seasons, maybe even to the very end, and audiences would have been graced with with Marchand's exceptionally complex performance to boot. In fact, that was the plan, with Livia intended to have a major role in the third season. Unfortunately though, it just wasn't meant to be, as Marchand tragically passed away after a battle with lung cancer, and was swiftly written out of the third season as a result. Her absence is felt though throughout the rest of the series. Number 9. Troy Otto in Fear the Walking Dead Ask any fan of Fear the Walking Dead and you'll find that the vast majority were taken in by Daniel Sharman and his deceptive portrayal of survivalist Troy Otto. Appearing only in the show's third season, he was portrayed as the youngest and more dangerously eager son of secretive community founder Jeremiah Otto, a man he constantly tried to prove himself to as a strong and militant leader. Possessing some sociopathic traits, no thanks to his terrible father, Troy was soon revealed to be the season's true villain, destroying the safe haven his family created and nearly getting most of the other characters killed in the process. After that though, there was a compelling change in his development that made it seem as though he'd become a redeemed anti-hero. Just as he started to show promise for bigger things though, series protagonist Madison beat him to death with a hammer in an irritatingly anticlimactic fashion, no less. Number 8. Jerome Valeska in Gotham Despite being a fan favourite scene stealer, Jerome Valeska never made it past recurring guest star in Gotham, showing up mostly in season 2 and then sparingly throughout the rest of the messy yet wildly entertaining run. Portrayed by Cameron Monaghan, Jerome was a twisted anarchist and psychopath, based loosely on the Joker but working wonders as his own compelling villain. More grounded and well developed than his twin Jeremiah, Jerome's was a messy, far too surreal story. He briefly died only to be resurrected because reasons. But whenever he was around, Gotham found a way to feel as dark and menacing as it was always meant to be. Unfortunately, as a whole, his role on the show ended up feeling somewhat lacking and inconsistent, as if the writers were worried to use him to his fullest potential. If they had, it would have improved the series exponentially. Number 7. Barris Offee in Star Wars The Clone Wars At first, young Padawan Barris Offee wasn't a villain at all, but an eager Jedi who formed a strong friendship with fellow learner Ahsoka Tano. After a couple seasons absent from the main story, during which time it was simply assumed she was still a loyal member of the Jedi Order, she returned for one last arc, in which it was revealed that she had framed Ahsoka for a terrorist attack and had fallen to the dark side after becoming disillusioned with the Jedi way. This promising bolt from the blue really appears as if from nowhere, and lacks any kind of development or meaning to back it up. It also doesn't really lead anywhere, as she's arrested and never mentioned again, not even by her master. If the Clone Wars had given Barris the development her turn to villainy deserved, her eventual downfall would have been so much more compelling and well earned. Tragically though, it felt more like a rushed out character assassination. Number 6. Tuco Salamanca in Breaking Bad 
The Salamanca family are the Breaking Bad universe's most consistent and troubled villains. First introduced in the debut season thanks to Raymond Cruz's dangerously volatile Tuco. The first dealer to ever make a deal with Walt White and Jesse Pinkman, Tuco's unhinged drug fueled ways were meant to act as a sharp reminder, both to Walt and Jesse and the audience, that the show's protagonists were seriously out of their depth. Murdering without thought, manipulating without care, Tuco stole the show from the off and seemed poised to be a major player until he was shot dead at the beginning of the second season by DEA agent Hank Schrader. It's been reported since the show aired that Cruz was meant to be a main character, but the actor found the role far too taxing to pull off and begged to be killed off. Fair as this may be, it still would have been cool to see Tuco stick around. Number 5. Francis Walcott in Deadwood Played by the greatly underrated Garrett Dillahunt, Deadwood Season 2 antagonist Francis Walcott was unlike anything the Western drama has ever seen. Whilst the show was known for its electric locals and dangerous killers, none quite matched the menace and unpredictable complexity of Walcott, a sharply dressed businessman with a delight for killing sex workers whenever the mood struck him. Thanks in large part to Dillahunt's measured performance and menacingly soft-spoken drawl, Walcott was able to freeze blood with just a word. But just as he seemed to make a place for himself as a future mainstay, he committed suicide after his vicious employer George Hurst rode into town. Looking back, Walcott's death seemed a touch too rushed for such an important character departure, and it would have been cool to see him stick around as a thorn in Deadwood's side. Number 4. Sunday in Buffy the Vampire Slayer all it took for Sunday to make an impression on the Buffy the Vampire Slayer audiences was one episode. Appearing as the main villain of the show's season 4 premiere, she proves a worthy adversary for the Slayer, and a madly entertaining one thanks to Catherine Town's hilariously cocksure performance. As is always the case with the supernatural drama's Monsters of the Week though, Sunday doesn't last long, killed at the end of the episode by a battle-ready Buffy, never to be mentioned again. Given how entertaining and surprisingly complex she turned out to be, and how uninspired the main villains of season 4 ended up being, looking at you, Adam, it wouldn't have been a bad idea for Sunday to stick around as a more long-lasting threat to the Scoobies. Number 3. Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes in Luke Cage Here's a rule that everyone should follow for the rest of time. If you get Mahershala Ali as a villain, don't kill him off without giving him the development he deserves. In Luke Cage, Ali only appears as Crime Lord Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes for the show's first seven episodes, after which he finds himself bludgeoned to death by his bitter cousin Mariah, an admittedly great character who nonetheless serves as a crushing reminder of what the show threw away in Ali. Given the towering performance of two-time Oscar winner Ali and Cottonmouth's boundless potential going forward in the MCU, it's truly enraging to remember how and when his time on the show ended. Honestly, the MCU's Netflix series are all pretty damn great, rarely missing the opportunity to blow audiences away before they're unfairly cancelled. But the loss of Cottonmouth is still their biggest mistake. Number 2. Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones the biggest issue with Game of Thrones' final season lies in its treatment of Daenerys Targaryen, the mother of dragons who for eight seasons slowly but surely made her way to the mainland to claim the Iron Throne. Whereas the rest of the fantasy epic had been meticulously planned out, slow burning and compelling, the final season decided to rush to the finish line. Within only a handful of episodes, Danny goes from virtuous queen seeking redemption to angry villain no one can root for. Her turn to villainy is obvious in hindsight, and it should be said brilliant. But even so, its execution is painfully upsetting, throwing away years of fan investment and making her final fate feel disappointingly unearned. Had the writers just slowed things down and spent a bit of time building up her downfall, it would have massively improved the entire series, and Game of Thrones wouldn't be remembered today for dropping the ball at the last second. Number 1. Shane Walsh in The Walking Dead It's been over a decade, but Shane Walsh from The Walking Dead is still the TV villain we wish we could have seen more of. 
Though his fall from grace and death at the hands of former best friend Rick Grimes is incredibly gripping and a major turning point in the series, Shane was such a compelling presence in the drama's early years that subsequent seasons often felt lacking in parts because of his death. Most of this is down to John Bernthal's explosive, multi-layered performance, which effortlessly finds the vulnerabilities within the monster. Instead of staying faithful to the comics, The Walking Dead would have done well to subvert expectations and keep Shane alive. Perhaps to go off on his own adventures before returning to the core group a changed man, with even more baggage. The potential was endless. And that concludes our list. If there are any other TV villains that you would like to see more of, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Don't forget to also head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.